Have you all noticed that low-end reserve list cards are being cut down at an alarming rate? Hi everyone and welcome back to the guy who never graduated Magic University. I am MTG Moxman. I hope you're having a great day in the world of magic wherever you are today. You know, lately I've been trying to buy some dual lands, work my way up to some extra cards, you know, been paying down the debt as it were, working toward a goal. And when you start focusing on old cards, you can kind of get lost because there's so many old cards to collect. And a lot of these cards over the years have been bought up and bought out by other investors and collectors out there. And you're kind of the last dog at the bowl and you're trying to get your hands on what you can get your hands on for whatever price has already been set out there by other players over the last couple of decades. And then you start to look at cards like Tiaga, Scrubland, Savannah, the lower end reserve list dual lands, and they're all starting to rise, but you want to get your hands on some. You look at Wheel of Fortune, ah, Force Field even, cards that were always attainable, Cyclopean Tomb, they're all slowly just etching upward and seem more and more expensive to the player base as they try to get their hands on one or they come up with a deck idea or it's just a card they've always wanted. And then you start getting to the lower end reserve list cards, the Soldevi Excavations of the world, even cards like City of Shadows that nobody loved back in the day. Cards from the dark that are finally being recognized for the sheer awesomeness that they are, but they're all reserve list. And then you start getting to the bottom of the barrel, the 40 cent, 50 cent, $1 reserve list cards. The good old narwhal of the day. Remember this one? Remember this guy? Look at that beast. And that is a forecasting cost, 2-2 two, two, first strike protection from red whale. That's right. Now, it is from Homelands. You're looking at around 220 million cards made from this particular set. And somebody went in there. This is one of the first buyouts that I remember happening. I remember friends talking about this and saying, wow, like somebody went and bought all these copies. Yep, but there are 239,000 plus copies of this card out there when it was put into production, roughly, give or take, depending on sheets and stuff. But there's a lot out there. And when you start looking at the print runs, when you start seeing what's out there, there's alpha, beta, look at that, 7 million, two, alpha's 2 million, 2.6, right? Unlimited's 40 million. Then you start getting to some really super high numbers. They get really disgusting, okay? Arabian Nights, 5 million. That's why Arabian Nights, Antiquities, Legends, even the Dark, up till the dark. That's why a lot of people feel they can collect those. Because it's a very quantifiable amount. You kind of know how many are out there and how much damage is being done. Nobody really knows the attrition rate. But as people go in and they want to become involved in magic. And they want to get involved. People, there are people who just want to get involved in a buyout and have a good time. And a few friends get together and they all put in 20 30 bucks And they go buy as many Delphs cubes as they can. Spirit Shield, they just want to go in there and have a good time. When you look at some of the cards that have been bought out, when you see Spirit Shield there, I don't think whoever's buying Spirit Shield really intends for it ever to become an iconic epic card. Doesn't be worth millions of dollars. But they do want to participate. They do want to have fun and say that they've affected the market in a way that few other people will ever get to say. If that person has 500 copies of Spirit Shield, that is probably one of the largest amounts available in the entire world. That one person has solidified a little piece of their own magic history that nobody can take away from them. I think when people look at these cards and you see, oh, spoils of evil, right? When you see this stuff and you go, wow, like that, that card's okay, but it's not that great. And Ice Age had 500 million. Yes, there was 500 million cards, but... In, in the case of Ice Age, they had 121 rares, so there's not as many copies out there as people think. And attrition rates, destruction, really, what are we getting at? The idea of trying to buy out this many cards, Dwarven Ponies for the world! The idea is probably ludicrous to most people who play, take the game seriously and just play and say you can never buy all those cards. You're right, you can't. Anyone who tells you differently is just being ridiculous. But you can get a controlling stake, you can say that you have the highest amount of those cards available on the open market in one player's hands or one little small cadre of players who've all put their money together. And like I said, in Magic history, this stuff cannot be taken away. When you look at cards like City of Shadow and it was $20 in 2020 and now it's 200 bucks 
in 2022. Why do you think that happened? Do you think all of a sudden players just said it's an amazing card? No, they just started buying it up. I recommended a long time ago, people participated, and we got where we are today. But the idea that they're being clear cut, basically every week I'm hearing of a buyout from people on, on, on my email, on my Discord. Did you see this? Have you noticed this? Uh, I know a person who bought 40 or 50 of these. Have you taken a look for your top 10 video on the weekend? It's happening every week. That can't continue. The clear cutting of low end reserve list cards eventually means the price rises. And when that price goes up, people start looking for those cards in their collections, put them back on the market. The price has risen to a certain level though, and stores aren't going to want to pay that kind of price for a junkie reserve list card. So everything stagnates. Eventually the prices fall back down until the next mini buyout happens where people clear cut through. But people do want to participate. I myself like the idea of participating in the cards I go after, even the low end stuff, just to say I've got four of something, eight, 12, 16. So the excavations, I've got like 60 copies or more now. I haven't counted in a while, but I still buy four every month. I don't care if they're near mint or not, I'm just buying four. I'm looking at the long-term effects that I personally am having on the reserve list and knowing those cards aren't coming back just gives everyone a little bit of peace of mind, doesn't it? Because these cards aren't that great. They're not that usable. You're risking a lot of money in some cases if you buy a higher end card that has no value or a card that's been driven up in value and really isn't played that much. But if you're buying a card for fun because it was 40, 50, 60 cents for some light played, moderately played copies and you bought 60 of them for like $28, nobody can take that away from you. Do that enough times and you say, hey, I've got two binders full of Spirit Shield. Zaleon Sword, Dwarven Pony, River Merfolk, whatever it may be. Hey, when we get to lower print runs like Envisions, 180 million cards, buying the Triangle of War probably doesn't look that bad as a reserve list buyout, does it? Thousand copies? Yeah, that affected the market. Things happen. And although it's already retracing back down, as all these cards, these cards will inevitably do, they'll all go back down. But the fact that they got affected... They got held up and propped up by one person, by two, by five people, 10 people. It can happen. But the more that it keeps happening, the less there are actually available out there. It means things get drained from that giant ocean, river, lake, pond of reserve list cards that I talk about all the time. And there's just less and less. I've noticed overall prices are just a little bit higher here and there. Even when they retrace down, they never retraced it back to where they were. Especially if you hold the line and hold on to those cards, even if they're worthless. If you're holding on to them, the other cards can't go down in price. You're artificially holding that price right where it is. Even if you never buy a copy and nobody else ever goes after that card, it is going to stay there. Because there's no need for it to go lower. There's no reason for it to go up. It's just staying where it is because of the cards that people bought. But people do want to participate. They do want to get involved and keep buying these cards until eventually no reserve list card. The worst of the worst, the lowest of the low is going to be five bucks or more. And that'll make every other card going upwards be affected. Even things like Arabian Nights Commons, they're not going to be five, 10 bucks. They're going to be 50 bucks. Any Arabian Nights Common, even heavily played, it's going to be 50 bucks. Unlimited lands, unlimited cards from unlimited edition. You think they're going to stay at a dollar, 50 cents, two bucks? No. They are the new bling. Overall, they'll be gone. It doesn't just have to be reserve list. It just has to be bought out so there's none available. Or until one person controls such a large stake of those that you have to go to them and pay the prices they want to get that card. If it is a card that people want, a lot of times it's not, which is why it'll just stay there or eventually retrace down. It's fascinating to see, but we are seeing a massive clear cutting of a whole bunch of low end reserve list cards and it doesn't show any signs of stopping right now which makes me think my timeline of 2028 it's going to be a lot less than that before a lot of these cards spike up and kind of hold there so thanks a lot for tuning in and uh hope you got the cards you wanted or had some fun because it won't go on forever see you guys tomorrow and of course a big shout out goes to all the fantastic patrons on the channel who make videos like this possible each and every day. This bonus video is brought to you by the patrons of MTG Moxman. Have a great day everyone and enjoy the video. Yeah, my uh, wife is still recuperating from COVID so I'm home still.
So I got to do some extra videos this week. This is one of them. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's coming up pretty soon after the last one, but I just thought, why not? You guys should be able to enjoy an extra video today. So thanks a lot to all my patrons out there who made this possible. I'll see you guys soon. Have a fantastic day today. Oh, wait, wait. Didn't want you to forget. Drider. Got to get a drider in there. Drider just for you. 10K box. Drider.